So my name's Omar Almaini. I'm a professor here in the astronomy group. Um, like most staff here, I have I split my time roughly 50-50 between doing research and teaching and teaching related activities. My research is on the distant universe. I study very distant galaxies, how galaxies form and evolve in the universe. I'm also very interested in the black holes and the nuclei of distant galaxies. Teaching wise, I teach a number of things, including a third year course on extreme astrophysics. But my main admin roles, I've got two main admin roles here. One is I'm postgraduate tutor. So I have overall responsibility for our PhD students, make sure they're happy, how they're progressing well and their welfare and so on. And I'm also a student experience officer, which undergraduates will know me uh, in that role. Uh, and in that role, uh, my job is to take an overview of student feedback. So I look at the feedback from all of the modules. I meet with the students, meet with the reps regularly, meet with the student representatives frequently. Uh, I look at the results from the NSS, the National Student Survey. And I try and get an overview of how students, of what their experience is like here at Nottingham in the physics department and how we can improve that. I'm quite proud of the fact I think we've, we have made some significant improvements. Uh, I think things were fine before, but I think they're better now. Um, I think the main thing we identified when I started in this role was to try and create more of a sense of community in the physics department so that students don't just come, go to lectures and then go home that they feel valued and part of the community here, part of the physics community. Uh, they mentioned a few years ago they'd like to have a, lot, a bit more interaction with our staff, informally, not in a teaching setting, which is a really interesting point. So we've spoken to FISSOC over the years to try and create more events to allow that to happen. In fact, this afternoon, we've got a Meet the Lecturers event, where there will be about half a dozen, ten members of staff, including myself, and we're just chatting to the students about what we do. We've introduced study rooms, which was something the students suggested. The students can go and stay within the department and study, and then the lecturers are nearby if they need help. We've also improved the student common room, and the students asked for a kitchen in the common room, and we were able to put that in for them, so they have now have you know, a, a, a fridge and a kettle and a toaster and so on, so that they can you know, have a cup of tea, bring in their lunch, and stay within the building. And I think that really helps to create more of an atmosphere that they belong here and that they feel part of our community. It's very different. Uh, I did my degree, my undergraduate degree in Edinburgh in the uh, early 90s. Things have changed a lot. Um, we had to be far more self-sufficient then. You'd go to a lecture, the lecture would write on the board, you took notes and that was it. We didn't have any online resources. Well, the internet had only been around a few years. Um, but yeah, we had to be far more self-sufficient. We didn't have the support network that hopefully students can benefit from now. Uh, so I think things have improved an awful lot for undergraduates. I mean, I, I had a great time. I really enjoyed my degree. But I think there's a lot more support for students there. And online resources, the notes being online and so on. I think lectures are also more accessible. There's more of an expectation that lecturers and professors will be able to you know, free to chat with students and give help and so on. Whereas it was slightly more us and them back in the day. A good question. Uh, I think, thinking back to when I was uh, in my early days as a researcher, just after my PhD, uh, I bit off more than I could chew. I took on too many different things. I got involved in too many different projects. And they all progressed at a snail's pace. So for quite a few years, I was overcommitted. So and certainly, certainly in terms of someone doing research, my advice would be don't take on too much, focus on one or two things and do them really well. And it's taken me a long time to realise that, that it's very easy to be overcommitted, particularly if you're enthusiastic, oh, well, I'll get involved in that project and this project and that project and use that telescope. But you need to follow through and produce the scientific results. So that's one thing I've learned over the years, not to overcommit myself. So I, I've always been interested in astronomy in particular from a very young age. I remember at the age of seven, my dad asked me what I wanted for my birthday and I said an astronomy book. <laughs> so I was kind of a nerdy little kid. Um, but then as I got older, I really enjoyed, I was good at maths and physics and I really enjoyed that side of things. So for me, it was very natural that I'd study physics and maths and astronomy at university. Um, in particular, I think as a teenager, I sort of moved away from it for a while 
and became more interested in other things. But I read Carl Sagan's Cosmos, his book based on his TV series, when I was 12, 13. And that really inspired me. He writes in such an inspiring way, such an amazing communicator, and that really connected with me. Uh, I thought, I want to do that when I get older. Proudest moment, I said, I, I, I had to think about this. I had lots of different things. I mean, uh, personal research things I'm proud of, discoveries I've made, papers I've written I'm proud of. Uh, particularly proud of my, my first PhD student when he got his PhD. And my P PhD students generally over the years are proud of the achievements they make. Um, it's particularly nice because when a student starts a PhD, you basically spoon feed them and tell them what to do and they go back and, so, back and forth. And then at some point, hopefully, uh, so there's a special moment when they finally get it and they can run with the research program and they come and tell me what they should be doing. And that's really nice. And they kind of emerge as real researchers. That's a nice special moment. Uh, I haven't used anything particularly weird, but uh, can I stand up? So, uh, in terms of props, uh, these little fellas I've used in my lectures, two little cuddly black holes. They're a present from my sister-in-law. I think there's a lady online on Etsy who makes them, sells them. So the little cuddly black holes is a, a little one and a slightly bigger one. And what's quite amazing is that if this really was a black hole, this little thing, it would be more massive than the Earth even at that size. And this thing would be, you know, five or six times the mass of the Earth for a black hole. Black holes don't have eyes, though, as far as we know. Yeah, I really like Nottingham. Uh, for, uh, it's a beautiful campus. It really is. And I, throughout the day, I, I, I often go out for walks by myself around the campus just to clear my head. Sometimes quite noisy here. <laughs> Someone cutting the grass or something. Um, but yeah, it's a supportive, very friendly department um, and it makes it a nice place to work.